because you know you must have heard then, uh, these things the satanic verses so you know people all the time keep uh, referring so many many report in tabari and many books of tafsir all the time confusing the people that the, when the surah al-najm was revealed and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reading these the verses of raaitum allat wal uzza wa manat al-thalithat al-ukhra you know about them to actually criticizing those idols then some reports in tabari and everywhere says that uh, shaitan put on the tongue of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these words تلك الغراني قلعلا وإن شفاعتهن لا ترجى. Sometimes words have different. It's a praise for these idols. These idols are created. How great they are, very high, and their intercession in the day of judgment is accepted. And when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said these words, then believers and unbelievers, everybody fell in sajda. Because believers realize that now they compromise. Now the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم also praising their idols. And, you know, and to it fine. They have no problem to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their problem only was because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to criticize shirk and kufr. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa can compromise and he also can praise idols, Allah and Uzza, to then fine. So then all of them reach sajda. And it happened. And they connected uh, with the verse in Surah Al-Hajj. وَمَا مِن نَبِيٍ إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَتِهِ so they translate tamanna as tala. And they say in one of the language of Arab people or Habasha or somewhere else, tamanna means tala. So whenever a prophet recites, shaitan puts words in his recitation, uh, uh, reciting. Surah Al-Hajj, they say. So they say that okay, what happened, the prophet was reading, and shaitan puts the word on his mouth and later on correct it. It really, the problem is not only you know, in this Surah al the problem is in their understanding as a Surah Al-Hajj. Because Quran never has used the word tamanna in the meaning of tala. And understand the Quran has been revealed in the language of Quraysh people. Quraysh don't use tamanna in the meaning of tala. So why Quran for this word is going to use the word of habasha, meaning of habasha people, for, you know, with no context? You know, and, and, and do we have any proof that any prophet or messenger, when they ever came, shaitan puts word, words on their mouth? Actually, shaitan, Quran keeps telling all the time, the, uh, the prophets and messengers are protected and when the Quran is revealed, angels are there, or shaitans and never can come there. It is so clear. So how it is possible? So we have to understand this properly all the time it keeps coming. So first thing is all the re reports about this thing, the tilqal gharani qul ula wa inna shafa'ata hunna turajja, all the reports in Tabari and other books of the Tafsir, none of them are authentic. They are munkar, wahiyat, or they are very, very weak. Nothing is strong. The truth of the matter is what we mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. The truth is that when the Prophet وسلم, read Surah Al-Najm, it is so powerful against the idol worshipping, so powerful, and he did and Surah Al-Najm has sajda. So it was so powerful even unbelievers, they just couldn't control themselves. When the Prophet did sajda, they also did sajda. They did not realize, they are not believers, but you know, they could not control themselves. It is so powerful. And also if you read Surah Al-Najm, Surah Al-Najm never allows those verses. It all criticizing the idols, so how can this shaitan will put there without any context? And unbelievers of Makkah, they know Arabic language. They can know this verse cannot fit in the Surah Al-Najmi. Nowhere can fit. And the Prophet himself, he is, he, he is wise man, he clever. He, he understands it's impossible. To so anyway, the context of Surah Al-Najmi and the condition, every, nothing actually allows these verses. To what the story Sahih Bukhari, he read Surah Al-Najmi and he fell inside that. And all the people around him, Walid and Mughira and everybody, they fell inside that. When the news came to people, Muslims who had done Hijrah to Habasha, so they realize, oh, it seems that Makkah has become Muslim. Everybody decides, decides that, so why we are here? Let's go back to Makkah. When they came to Makkah al-Mukarram, they realized, no, now opposition to the Prophet actually is much, much stronger. So some of them stayed, and some of them went back. So the story basically in Sahih Bukhari is this. The Prophet sallallahu read Surah Al-Najm and did Sajda, and everybody followed believers and believers. This thing has been made up because of the whole story. That you know, people of Havsha came and this. So they think how people could decide the unbelievers unless there must be some compromise. That's what they mean. So this never happened. There's nothing, no authentic hadith. Then what uh, the verse in Surah Al-Hajj means? The meaning of the Surah Al-Hajj is very clear. Surah Al-Hajj, if you read from the beginning, it is a surah which has been revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, uh, around the time of uh, uh, the last days in Makkah al -Mukarrama. When opposition to the Prophet was very, very huge, very big. And now, no doubt, when a messenger a Prophet comes, his intention always is that you know, he makes effort with the sabr and patience that people listen to him, believe in him, and until everybody follows him. 
and intention is that you know and then Islam gets victory every messenger prophet ethical the whole purpose is they have plan in their, in their mind they don't know the details of the plan they don't know this Allah Subhanahu reveals to them but at that they know they have come in this world to establish uh, the command of Allah and to make to, to worship Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala so they always actually we are so keen to go to every house to meet everybody to make them to become believer and for this purpose they are so patient and so, uh, so firm in the path of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala so everybody every prophet's plan is what the people become believer every prophet's desire is a people a people follow them and people people uh, you know are safe from the fire of hell that's what every prophet you know the desire but shaitans don't like this shaitans were jinnis or human being you know shaitans are both they they don't want the prophet's plan and the desire or wish to be fulfilled they always keep put a trouble and, and a problem in their path whatever the messenger do they will create some problem so that what Quran is saying, just summarize the whole thing. Meaning basically, Uma min Nabiyin illa idha tamanna. Meaning whenever a messenger comes and he really makes effort to make people believer and he desires and plans people become Muslim, shaitan comes and he puts a struggle, uh, uh, some, you know, some hindrance in their path. Shaitan suffering and judge what will be happening. Tamanna does not mean reciting. Tamanna means wishing, desire like in Arabic, Arabic language. That was the meaning. In Surah Hajj, it is very clear. You know, inshallah, when next time I have Musa, so I can show you the whole context. Basically, is the, the struggle of the Prophet sallallahu and then how he is so keen. People become believer, and how Makkan people among the shaitan, all shaitans, human being, a human shaitan and jinn shaitan, they are very keen to stop uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu from the from his plan. So they put hindrance. So tamanna means wishing. So uh, whenever a prophet comes, he always have wish and desire that people become Muslim. But shaitans, whether human being, human shaitan or jinn or insan shaitan or jinni shaitan, they put some problem or some some hindrance in their path and they want to stop them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide no, they will win. So that is the meaning is. So you know this that that does not mean shaitan puts any word on their mouth. Is it clear?